Welcome to the Build Your Reiki Business Podcast. I'm Christian of Standing Stones Healing, founder of the Reiki Business Collective and creator of the Build Your Reiki Business Program, sending blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business. Greetings, welcome, and thanks so much for tuning in to this week's episode of the Build Your Reiki Business Podcast. It's Christian of Standing Stones Healing, and of course, I am honored to have you here, and I am honored to be here, so thank you so very much. In this week's episode, we're talking about strategic planning, strategic planning for your Reiki business. And of course, this topic is a very timely one because it is the end of the year. And at the end of the year, we typically start thinking about the next year. Well, maybe you don't, maybe you don't start thinking about the next year until like uh, July of that year. (laughs) But for many of us, we are thinking about the next year our goals, our visions, our dreams, our plans around this time of year. And for many of us as Reiki business owners, we are doing our planning for the next year. And so in this episode, I'd like to talk a little bit about the power of strategic planning, um, the power of planning for our business. And I'm going to talk a little bit about my planning process for the next year. And of course, as we with anything on this podcast, you are welcome to take what resonates with you and what you find helpful and to leave the rest. So thank you so very much. Now for me in my Reiki business, my planning for the next year typically starts around, um, well, I'm going to, I'm going to say it typically starts around November, but actually because I run certain programs at certain times of the year, um, the planning for that actually starts much earlier depending upon the program. So let me give you a, for instance, uh, every year in spring, I run my growth month program. And this is a program to help us harness the power of spring to uh, bring in renewal in our own lives. And so that runs every spring. And so I don't wait until November to plan that program. I know I'm going to run it and I know it's going to run in the spring. It's the same thing with my Back to Center program. Back to Center is a yearly program that I run um, at the end of one year and the beginning of the next for transition to the new year with power and purpose. As a matter of fact, Back to Center is running and is available right now. It is a self-paced program. And so I know every year that those programs are going to run at a specific time. So I don't, I don't, plan for them um, in November because I already know when they're going to happen um, when they uh, when the season arises arrives <laughs> or arises um, and so I I will typically start around November uh, really looking at thinking about what's coming up for the next year. And I I will not do all of my planning for the next year in one go. And so what that means is that I don't sit down in November and block off a whole day to plan out all of the next year. And uh, what I'll typically do is that I'll start in November looking at the calendar for 2024, thinking about what I might like to plug in and where, and uh, what I might like to um, start uh, really bringing in to my business for the new year. So my my thinking, let's say my thinking, my reflecting starts in November. And uh, again, I typically have a pretty good idea already of certain things that are going to go at certain times and things that I do every year and to uh, put them at certain times of the year. Other things are not so uh, well-formed and are much more nebulous. 
for instance, when I might teach Reiki, um, how many times I might teach Reiki, um, and, uh, and where those might fit in. And so that has a different kind of a process around it because it's not so dependent upon the season as something like growth month or back to center. And so there's a lot more flexibility with something like Reiki. Um, also, uh, planning my unlock your card magic program for card reading. Now I will say that that program has been moved to a self-paced program. And so, uh, in the past I was scheduling out when I would offer it a couple of times a year. And for my 2024, I'm not doing that. I'm not uh, focusing on uh, choosing dates for that program because uh, it is now a self-paced program. And so what this all means is that for me, the planning process in my Reiki business is extended. You know, some Reiki business owners sit down and, and plan it all out at one go. Other Reiki business owners don't plan at all in their Reiki business. And others like me maybe do their planning in pieces. And so once I start my kind of thinking about it in November, I get a lot more serious about it in December and really um, mapping out the next year. Now, the way in which I will get serious about this is through a couple of methods. What I'll first do is that I'll take a look at um, my uh, 2024 goals. And of course, I look at those throughout the whole year. So it's not something that I um, don't already have an idea of where I am on my goals. Some years I'm better with it than others, quite frankly. <laughs> I'll, I'll be completely honest, this year I was not as good as staying on top of my yearly goals for my Reiki business as I usually am. <laughs> and so for next year, for 2024, the plan is to definitely change that. Um, but typically I'm much better at it than I was uh, this year, I must admit. Uh, but um, I do uh, revisit my goals throughout the year. And so where I'm at in terms of those goals is not something that I just sit down in December and review, but rather I'm reviewing throughout the year. Really, the best place where I do this is in my monthly meetings. Now, I've talked about monthly meetings in the podcast previously. So there is a podcast episode about uh, monthly meetings and my process for my monthly meetings. But these are especially helpful at the end of the year. Because what I'll do then in December is that I will look back at January's meeting minutes and compare them to what's happening at this point. And in my meeting minutes, I'm keeping track of numbers and metrics and things so that I can see where I was at the beginning of the year and now where I am at the end of the year. And so having those meeting minutes is very helpful. What I'll also do is that I will do an end of the year review. And so I'll do just like an over an, an a, a summary um, of the year and um, major developments, major things that have happened. Um, of course, I'll do uh, income and expenses for the year. And all of those things that I track, I'll do just like a big overall kind of end of year summary on my Reiki business. And so I'll do that too. That, that isn't very involved or in depth. It's just, uh, almost like a snapshot of where my Reiki bu business is, uh, for this year at the end of the year. And then of course, where I might like it to go for 2024. So what are the goals? What are the, uh, things that I would like to do and to bring in for the year? Now, I will say that for my 2023, uh, you know, when I was planning for my 2023, in my original plan was not things like the Build Your Reiki Business program or the Build Your Reiki Business podcast, which as I've, I talk about in the first episode of the podcast, and I've mentioned also in other episodes, came about as just some divine guidance 
And um, it resonated with me. And I said, okay, I, I hear the guidance loud and clear, and we're going to do it. But for my 2023, some of the things that I was planning to do that I didn't do is um, to create and offer my seven-way path program. Now, my seven-way path is a set of seven powerful and transformative practices. And using these as uh, these are tried and true timeless methods for growth and healing. And so one of my goals this year was to uh, offer the seven way path program that didn't happen because build your Reiki business happened instead. Uh, but I haven't forgotten about the seven way path. As a matter of fact, I've already written the seven way path book um, a few years ago. It just needs to be edited and revised and it might be time to send it out into the world. Um, if I get around to it, it's on the very long list. <laughs> Something else from my list for 2023 that did not get completed, again, you know, uh, build your Reiki business stuff uh, really pushed things aside. And I'm, I'm more than happy with that because I'm, I, I really love uh, the program and I really love the podcast and uh, all of the Reiki business content that I am creating. And so it's not a sad thing at all. But one of the other things that was on my list for 2023 that did not get completed was that um, I have a flute and babbling brook album. Uh, as, as some of you may know, I do play the Native American style flute. And I recorded quite a few songs out in the woods near running streams. And so uh, my goal was to take those recordings and turn them into an album. I haven't done that yet, and uh, that is indeed also on the very long list of creative things that I would like to do in my business. Now, will that get done in 2024? It remains to be seen. <laughs> always there is so much to do, and always I love all of the things that I do. Um, but those are just a couple of examples of things that were on my list for 2023 originally that just did not happen. When we do planning in our Reiki business, I think it's important for us to give ourselves some grace, to uh, give ourselves just uh, some uh, understanding and also some flexibility, to know that things are going to happen, things are going to come up, things aren't always going to go our way. As it is in life, so too it is in Reiki business. And so it's important for us in our planning process to leave some room for growth, to leave some room for life to happen, to leave some room for flexibility, and even indeed for intuition and divine guidance. Because who knows what the future might hold for us. Now, some other things that I will do in my Reiki business planning is that I will actually use my Back to Center program for both my personal end of year and beginning of next year reflection and rituals and also for my Reiki business. And so I created the Back to Center program out of things that I do at the end of of one year and the beginning of the next. And so I use these practices in my own Reiki business. And so some of the things that I'll do is that I will focus in on gratitude. I'm a major proponent of gratitude. By the way, it's number one on the seven-way path. <laughs> but I am a major proponent of gratitude. I actually have quite a few things on my uh, YouTube channel about gratitude. And so I will start with gratitude and listing out the things that I'm grateful for in my Reiki business from the year. Um, I will list out people to whom I am grateful for in my Reiki business, maybe people who I have worked with, maybe people who have had an impact on the business, maybe particular clients who have been very memorable over the past year. And so I really reflect on those things. I think about the challenges 
that I've had over the past year in my Reiki business. So the blessings um, and the things that have been challenging. And I, I, so I really start off with some deep reflection on my uh, Reiki business journey over the past year and giving thanks and reflecting on the blessings, including the blessings in the challenges themselves. And then I, I revisit my values. You know, values are really important. There's a podcast episode on uh, values in our Reiki business, and I re revisit those values. And I consider, is my Reiki business aligning with those values? And so is my Reiki business continuing to align with my values? Is it continuing to align with my own personal mission statement, my own personal beliefs? And um, how how is that alignment? And just checking and making sure that things are in alignment and uh, doing some rituals around clearing and cleaning, getting rid of things. I do this in my own personal life at the end of the year where I will do some ritual cleaning and clearing and getting rid of things. And in my Reiki business too, I ask what no longer serves me in my Reiki business and what might I get rid of in my Reiki business. And as I do those reflections, you know, what I might get rid of, what no longer serves me in my Reiki business might be some different kinds of things that might surprise me and might even surprise you too. For instance, maybe in 2024, I might release teaching Reiki. Who knows? Um, as I reflect and as I consider, that's something that I might let go of. Maybe I might let go of, well, in 2023, I let go of teaching Unlock Your Card Magic as a, uh, a live program. And so who knows what else I might get rid of for 2024 as I do my reflections and my thinking on my Reiki business and what I might want to release. Now, here's the thing, everyone, with what we release, just because we release something doesn't mean that it won't come back. And just because something isn't the right fit for us or our Reiki business right now doesn't mean that it's not the right fit in the future. And so I just want to encourage us to keep an open mind with our Reiki business and to keep an open mind about what it might be time to let go of and what it might be time to welcome in and what it might be time to bring back in the future. So who knows, maybe it might be time for me to just let go of the Flute and Babbling Brook album. <laughs> Um, but these are the kinds of reflections that I do in my Reiki business at the end of the year. Again, I use my Back to Center program. Now, this episode is not a plug for the Back to Center program, by the way. It's just that I use that program. I use my own program in my planning and visioning for the new year. Um, but I conduct rituals. I uh, send Reiki uh, to my business, to myself. I set my goals. Um, and, uh, you know, I want to encourage you in terms of goal setting. If you're like, I'm not a goal setting person. I don't really like goal setting. You don't have to set goals in your Reiki business. This is not something that you have to do at the same time. Setting goals really can help to give our business focus and direction. And so goal setting can indeed be very helpful for us in our Reiki business. And it's just very common that um, the planning, the goal setting takes place at the end of one year and the beginning of another. Now, you might also be thinking, Christian, I don't even do my goal setting and planning until like January, and that's okay too, absolutely. You know, there's this great technique actually for strategic planning that does not do planning by the year. It rather plans out every 12 weeks. And so planning is not done in 12-month chunks, rather it's done in 12-week intervals. And so this comes out to, uh, you know, three months. 
Now, I will say that I actually gave this technique a try. And for me, I there were certain things about it that I did like for my Reiki business. And for some people to think and plan out a full year ahead is a little bit of a challenge. And uh, I typically, when I'm doing my really solid kinds of planning in my Reiki business, I typically don't plan the full year out, but I do the first part of the year. And then as the year moves forward, um, I am planning ahead. Now, is this the best way to do it? Well, Yes and no. It really depends upon you and your own preferences and what works for you and your Reiki business. But I can say that having dates for classes, for instance, is very helpful for students and for clients. And so what that means is that if we have students, say we're teaching Reiki, and uh, we have a student who's like, oh, I can't, I can't get in on this class, but when are you teaching again? I would love to join your next class. And you say, oh, I don't know. <laughs> then that student may very well be turned off and say, oh, well, first of all, is this teacher going to teach Reiki again? Is this something that they're going to do again? Are they dependable? Are they reliable? Are they operating their business by the seat of their pants? And so just be aware that if you don't like to plan ahead and don't have dates set for things like your um, Reiki classes, that some students and clients might be wondering how well organized or how professional you are. Now, I want to encourage you, there's no judgment in this. I'm guilty of it too. <laughs> So just be aware of the potential consequences if you don't plan out in advance in your Reiki business and how that might come off to certain uh, clients or students or, or even other business owners who you might work with, other associates or colleagues who you might want to partner or collaborate with. So just be aware of that. But we all run our Reiki business in different ways, and there's no one right or best way to do it. It's really all about what feels right to and resonates with you. So when it comes to the strategic planning, when it comes to um, you know looking ahead for your Reiki business, the, the main things I think are important is really asking yourself where you want your business to be going and does that align with your own values, with your business values. I think when it comes to strategic planning, to setting our goals and our uh, vision for the new year, that what really matters is that we are taking care to do some deep reflection, to do some purposeful exploration and not simply looking at a calendar and plugging in dates. I believe that strategic planning and um, goal setting and visioning in our Reiki business is really so much deeper than just plugging dates into a calendar, but rather at the core of it is some deep reflection and consideration for our business, where it is, where we want it to go, and ultimately, how is it aligning with our own core values? Is our business a reflection of how we want to be showing up in the world? Is it meeting our needs and is it meeting clients and students' needs as well? So in my Reiki business, I can tell you that coming up for 2024 is more Reiki business content, uh, more Build Your Reiki Business podcast episodes. That is going to continue to be a weekly series. I hope that you're enjoying it. If you are, please do leave a review, if give a like, drop a comment, share and send to a friend and all of those things because all of that really helps the podcast to grow. So thank you so very much. 
Also, the Build Your Reiki Business program is expanding as well, and I will be offering some paid Reiki business workshops on a variety of topics, so be on the lookout for those. I'm also slowly, slowly working on a book that will be released in 2024. If you're a listener of this podcast, yes, indeed, the book will be of interest to you. No, it is not the seven-way path book. That one might not get around to being released in 2024. (laughs) Yet still. So what's on for 2024 in your Reiki business? Please do visit us in the Reiki Business Collective and tell us all about it. We would love to hear what your plans are for your Reiki business in 2024. You can join us at facebook.com slash groups slash Reiki biz. And of course, the Build Your Reiki Business program will reopen in 2024 for enrollment. You can get on the waiting list to be the first to know at standingstoneshealing.com slash build. Oh, and by the way, if you are interested in learning more about the Back to Center program, it's at standingstoneshealing.com slash back to center. I'll drop all of those links down below, no matter where you are listening in. So, So no matter what your vision is for your Reiki business for 2024, I'm sending so many blessings and best wishes. Thank you. Thanks for tuning in to the Build Your Reiki Business podcast. Please like, share, subscribe, and send to a friend. Learn more about the Build Your Reiki Business program at standingstoneshealing.com slash build. Sending blessings and best wishes to your Reiki business.